Well, welcome to the Bernie Bush Baptist Church where Bishop David Denson Jr. is pastor and founder. We invite you all in today to join us for our Word on Wednesday, our Make It Live broadcast with our very own Bishop David Denson Jr. Tonight is going to be a special night. This is going to be an encouraging and passionate word that's going to help you build your faith and build your life and make you stronger. So for the next 40 to 50 minutes, sit back and enjoy these moments with our bishop. God bless you and enjoy this message. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you real good. Welcome to Word on Wednesday. Amen. Our lesson today, amen, tonight is coming from the thought of hope. That's what the lesson is about. It's about hope. And I know the fact that all of us have hope about something. So but before we go into it, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the hope that you've given unto us, dear God, that we can have everlasting life, the hope that we can experience the joy of your salvation, the hope, dear Father God, that we can walk in your ways and have the power that you've given us by the aid of the Holy Spirit. I hope right now, God, that he that hears this word, those that are listening to this word, are being blessed, and they will be moved to God to build themselves up in their most holy faith. Thank you, God, for giving us something to hope for. We give you all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The lesson is about hope, 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 hope. Now watch this. Understand this. Everyone in here has some type of hope that they have already demonstrated or initiated but we don't call it hope. We call it natural coincidences or we call it, it's just something that we do. But I guarantee you, whether you're standing or whether you're sitting, amen, you had hope. You don't know that you said it, but you act out of hope. You sat down in the chair that you're sitting on, hoping that it would hold you up. You got in your car, amen, hoping that it would start. You got up this morning, rolled out of the bed, hoping that your feet would hold you up. We all deal with hope in some type of degree. So in order to sidebar from my lesson about the Lord's Prayer, amen, I had a lot on my plate today, so I thought that I taught Tuesday, amen, last, uh, uh, yesterday, a Bible study about hope. So therefore, I thought I'd share with you so we're on the same page. Let's look at, we're going to just walk, walk through the Word of God, see what it says, and deal with this word hope. If I'm going to have hope, first of all, I need to have hope in the Lord. I need to have hope where? I need to have hope in the Lord. We hope in a lot of things, amen. We hope in lottery tickets. We hope in uh, uh, stock market. We hope in this or that other, amen. All of these incidents that we hope for are not in the Lord. And what we want to do is have our hope in the Lord because if we have our hope in the Lord, then we have a Lord that can make things happen in our lives. Look what the Bible says in Psalm 31, 31 and 24. It says this, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, and all ye that hope in the Lord. He'll do what? Number one, he said, be encouraged in the Lord, and he shall do what? He shall strengthen. He shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Otherwise, all of us, all of you and I that hope in the Lord, God says strength will come to you. So why do I have hope? I'm not looking to be lucky, amen. I'm asking God, amen, for a legitimate attribute or characteristic that I can trust in him, and that's what I hope for. Look at what Psalm says at 42 and 5. It says this, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of of his countenance. Otherwise, he says right there in your outline, it says, he said, why thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall, what? Yet praise him. When you don't feel like doing it, do it anyway. Because what takes place is, all right, he's for, for, for I will praise him for the help of his what? Counselors. I praise him. I hope for him. Amen. I hope in him because I want his countenance to show on me. That word counters, I need him to light me up, amen, where I am in my dark spot so I don't hope that I stay in the same place. 
It's moving forward in God and not away from God. So therefore, I'm not going to be cast down about what they say about the uh, 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 Ukraine war. I'm not going to say be discounted and quieted because of what's happening in Russia. My hope is in Jesus Christ. So my hope is where? In the Lord. And why? Because he's Lord of Lord and he is King of Kings. And then not only our hope in the Lord, but our hope in mercy. I hope in his what? His mercy. Not my mercy. Now we know everybody say, Lord, have mercy. But that ain't the one I'm talking about. I'm not talking about L-A-W-D. I'm talking about L-O-R-D. Lord have mercy. Hope in what? His mercy. Look what the Bible says in Psalm 33, 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. So my, my hope is going to be in the Lord. If I'm going to be the hope in his mercy, then I must understand that the eye of the Lord is upon them that what? That fear him. That's the word. Is him them that fear him. Then it says upon them that hope is what? His mercy. Otherwise, God says, I'm going to turn around and do for those that have hope in me at what? I know the fact they have my mercy. And that mercy is the fact that you deserve to die. You deserve, you know that you're wrong. You know that you've done not right, you've not done right, but yet and still you ask God to have mercy. There's a person that, that know they're guilty going to trial, and they'll throw, they throw themselves on the mercy of the court. When we throw ourselves on the mercy of the court with God, it's because we fear him and we're godly sorry. Not the fear of afraid, but we fear that we've not done his will and we don't deserve his mercy. That's where the fear comes in. I don't know about you. I've done some stuff, amen, and I do some things, amen, that I don't deserve his mercy. But because I fear him, yeah, God, I love you right there. Amen. The hope is in the Lord and his, and his God. Amen. Uh, uh, hope in the Lord of his mercy. Thirdly, amen, is a hope that's continuous. I don't need a hope that stop and go, amen, when the red light change. I need a hope that's what? Continuous. Otherwise, I don't want to be a part-time relationship with the God that I serve, and neither do you. You want a hope that's what? continuous. Otherwise, I don't need hope today and then luck tomorrow because they are not the same. For the luck is, amen, is a luck of the draw, is a luck of the straw, amen, but the hope is something that's embedded on the inside of somebody looking for their father to come. Hey, God, I love you right there. Watch this. He says right there in Psalm 71, 14, he says, but I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Otherwise, I'm waiting on you, God. Amen. And though I'm waiting on you, I ain't going to lose hope in you. Don't lose hope in your salvation. Don't lose hope in your walk with God. Don't lose hope in your peace with God. Don't lose hope in your marriage. Amen. The Bible says here, he said he will do what? He said he will come, amen, and yet praise him even yet the more. So when I praise him the more, the more I praise him, the more I hope. And many of you are not praising him like you should because you lost your hope. You thought you figured it out. You thought you had a handle on it. But God said that's not the way it's going to work. So but I will hope continually. The word continually means I won't stop. I don't know about you, amen. When I was a kid, my father used to tell us to wait for me after the baseball game, after baseball practice, and he pulled us to the side and said, now I'm coming. Don't you go nowhere until I get there. And we'd be the last one at the baseball diamond and parents with nicer cars than us and had room and said, can we give you a ride home? And we said, no. Uh, can, uh, is your daddy coming? Yes. What time is coming? I don't know. But I never lost hope. Now, getting in the car riding with them would have been losing hope. And some of you, come here, come here, come here, come here. Some of you, all right, are getting in the devil's car because you lost hope. You're trying to do it your way because you lost hope. But this says it's continuous. And see, I have this faith about God. I have this hope in God that he'll never forsake me, nor will he ever leave me. He said, but I will hope continually. Look here, saints of God, never stop hoping. Be like the kid with the Christmas tree, amen, looking for that little fat boy to come down the chimney. Ain't going to happen, but hope for it. And guess what? That child puts out cookies and milk, amen, with the hope of some kind of Santa Claus going to come. 
He doesn't learn earlier, later on in life, that Santa was mama, Santa was daddy, Santa was grandmama, Santa was somebody else. I'm just trying to tell you, you've had hope in the wrong thing. And I'm telling you right now, Santa is Jehovah. Mm. Santa is the Lord Jesus Christ that died for our sins. Continuous. Watch this. If I'm going to have uh, hope in the Lord and hope in his mercy and I'm have hope that's continuous, then guess what? I'm to have, have hope in his word. Otherwise, I'm going to have some type of policy that says that God is going to do what he's going to do. Otherwise, when one dies of a, a heart attack or one has a contract, uh, it, they don't, it's not the word that they have, it's what's written. And I want you to know that it is already written that God will make a way. Look what Psalms 135 says this. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And his word, I do hope. He says, I wait for the Lord. My soul, a man, doth wait. And in his word, do I hope. So while I'm hoping for God, while I'm waiting for God, a man, I have a word, a man, that that solidifies my hoping, that authenticates my desire to hope. Here's the question. What authenticates your hope? Is it built on your job and uh, what you do and how, what kind of education you have? If that is, a man, you don't have enough hope. He says, I wait on the Lord. Don't take it down now. I say, I wait on the Lord, amen. Why? My soul doth wait. So I wait, my thought waits, and then my soul waits. And then my soul is waiting on a word that makes my thought and my soul come together. And the Bible says, how can two walk together except they agree? Look what it says. I wait on the Lord. I wait on the Lord. Amen. My soul doth wait. And his word do I hope. So I'm waiting on God. And then at the same time, I'm waiting for my hope to be manifested by the word of God. Look what Romans 15, 4 says. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our hearing. And we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. He says aforetimes, all right? We were written, up, it was written for our learning. Though, uh, let me try it this way. God writ, wrote everything down on the word of God for our learning aforetime. He said that, it was that we what? We might have through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. God says, I'm going to give you an assurance policy that when others say you don't have it, you have the word to say you have it. Otherwise, you can't tell me that I don't have a right to this because it's written in the policy. And the policy is the word of God. He said, I find comfort in the scriptures, amen, that I might have hope. So many of us, watch this, this almost insinuates and is saying this, that many of us don't have hope because we don't have scripture. We don't have hope because we don't read the word of God. Come here real close, I'm going to, come I feel like Mr. Rogers, I'm in the neighborhood now. Some of you are walking around with mystical thought about hope. And that's why you are wishy-washy and that's why you are shaken because you have no word. It is the scriptures that comforts me that make me have hope. When others say I cannot do, the Bible says, great is he that is in me than he that is in the word. It's, it's the word of God that does it. It puts it in place for us, amen. So therefore, my hope is word. In his word, not my word, not your word, in his word. Quit listening to everybody else and go back to him. Ah, oh, God. And then, I love this one, y'all, the hope of the righteous. My, my, the hope of the righteous. Look what it says in Proverbs here, 10, 28. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. Say no more. I can walk away there and drop the mic right now. But watch this. The hope of the righteous shall be what? Gladness. And people wonder why you're so excited about God, why you always don't have bad days, if you will, why you always go past things over nine yards, because the hope of the righteous shall be gladness. I am operating in gladness. I, I am fulfilled with gladness. It is the gladness that I have, amen, that makes my expectation come. Now watch this. But the expectation of the wicked, they shall perish. See, a person that has no hope, 
amen, ain't got nothing to lose. A person that has no hope, amen, one thing you don't want to do, watch this, let me try it this way. You don't want to bag, bag an a angry dog uh, uh, in the corner. A dog that ain't got nothing to lose, that booger will fight. You don't want to bag someone into the corner, amen, that ain't got nothing to lose. And some of these people, because they have no Christ, they have no life, they have no word, and they have nothing to lose. Right here in the city of Victorville, amen, just several days ago, a guy was on the highway, amen, and guy was turning around, and he was breaking him and breaking him, amen, in front of him. And so the guy followed him off the freeway, got out of his car to confront the guy, and they shot him three times. He had nothing to lose. You know why? They have no hope. And, and I tell you right now, this new day right now, y'all quit, quit, you better quit being heroes. You better quit honking at folks. You better quit giving people bad signs or whatever you may do. Because some of these folks ain't got nothing to lose. They're hell bound already and their activities show it. Look at the, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. Otherwise, when the wicked hope for something, they have no word. When the wicked hope for something, they have nothing to sustain them. When the wicked want something, amen, they have no contract. They have no agreement. So therefore, the expectation of them, they shall perish. What it really says is the outcome. They shall perish. Perish by what? By not having everlasting life. Hey, God, I love you right there. So we find the hope of the righteous. And then... Here, you and I stand, and here you and I sit. Now, we move to the place that we, the hope for our children. Oh, we ought to park the care right now, because in this modern-day society, when our children are being raised by social media and not by substantial circumstances or better foundational things, amen, it's a bad deal. The hope for our children is this. I don't know what your hope is for your children, amen, but it's my desire, amen, that my children would serve God, that they would love God, they would be honored by God, and they would celebrate God. That's my desire, amen. Look what Proverbs says about it, 1918, it says, Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. Let me tell you, this works like this. If you're a parent, you've been here. You had to chase in your son, your daughter, and uh, it was not comfortable. But the Bible says right here, the hope for our children is this. Chasing thy son while there's still hope. Otherwise, spare the rod, spoil the child. That scripture really says, spare the rod, you hated the child. For a person that will not chasten his child or their child, a man does not love their child like they should. Because the Bible says God chastened those in whom he what? And whom he loves. So chasten thy son while they're what? It's still hope. Otherwise, while he's able to receive, while he's able to pull in, while he's able to comprehend, while he's able to hear your voice and know other voice, our challenge is we be wasting to the last minute when they won't hear our voice. And now they got too many voices. The voices of their friends, the voices of their peers, the voices of peer pressure, amen. How many people, amen, that you know lost their virginity because of voices? How many know that end up on drugs because of voices? These things that we listen to other people. God says that if we hope for our children, amen, we chasten thy son while there is still hope. That word still hope while there's still potential while there's still a dependency on you. Because once they don't depend on you no more, you ain't got no say so. One of my nephews called me and was challenged by one of his sons. And he called me and said, Uncle, I need to talk to you before I, uh, uh, before I go to jail on this kid. He says, uh, he wants to smoke dope, amen, and do what he want to do, but he doesn't want to listen to me. So I know that this is a legal thing now, and everybody's doing it right now, but uh, I even came to agreement. You can do what you're going to do, but don't do that in my house. He, he turned around and tried to negotiate with him to let him do it, but don't do it inside the house. Comes home and places lit up. He's still doing it, and pretty much said, I'm going to do it anyway, you like it or not. And I said, do you remember when uh, I took you in the garage? Yeah. 
I thought I was taking out the trash. I said, I got you right where you need to be. And you and I had a conflict, man, man, because you wanted to be a man in my house. You wanted to challenge me when I pay the bills. And some of you are letting these kids challenge you and you pay the bills. You're doing what they want you to do and what they want to do and you're paying the bill. He said, you better chase that child while there's still time. Otherwise, don't wait till they get grown to start being a parent. You have to be a parent when they come out the womb. And I told him, I said, son, nowadays, they can't do what I did to you. So what you need to do is give him his options. If he can't obey, he can't stay. If he choose not to have the bed that you made for him, then he chose a sidewalk. If he can choose, amen, to smoke dope whenever you want to, then go somewhere and smoke it when you want to. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And he calmed down and holding nine yards. said, I got you, Unc. I said, you got to be careful because they ain't what it used to be. And you got to do strikes and you already, you don't need to go back because of no kid. He sure don't know that do it for no funny cigarettes. Chasing while what? You still have hope. Do it while it's hope. Parent, listen, do it while you still hope. Because I dare, I guarantee you, amen, if you teach that little girl how to dress, amen, and teach that boy how to act, amen, they may get old and not do it, but they will not forget it. Oh, my God. He says, watch this, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. And he was calling him, my nephew was talking to me, and he was crying. And I said, all right, now, toughen up. Straighten up. Get your face straight. Go in there and speak to him with authority. And then go in your room and cry. Because there's not a parent that wants to hurt their child. There's not a parent that really wants their child to go bad. And what you have to do, you have to straighten yourself up and be like Jesus Christ. Amen. And he wept because of the souls of mankind. He wept, so ain't nothing wrong with you crying. But you go do that on your own someplace. Father, go in your room. And I used to wonder why my dad would always take off after he whoop us. I said, something wrong with him, amen? But I found out after I got children, that's where he cried. We go somewhere and we make these tough decisions, amen? And it's not easy, parents, but you have to go somewhere else and cry. Build yourself up in your most holy faith, amen. He says, so spare for his crying. Lastly, not lastly, but next, amen, the hope of salvation. It's the hope of what? Everlasting life. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the hope of what? Salvation. Lamentations 3.26 says it this way for us to grab hold of. He says this, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. He said, it is good that a man should what? Both hope and what? Quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Otherwise, God says, I know that you'll get dismayed. I know that you're going to have some situation, amen, but don't lose hope. Quietly, amen, continue, amen, to wait on the salvation of the Lord. Otherwise, the coming of the Lord. Otherwise, not just our everlasting life salvation, but sometimes you need salvation right where you're at. Let me try it this way. You need to be saved from what you're doing. You've got to wait for the salvation of the Lord to get that. Watch that. It is good that man should both hope and quietly wait. God says, I want you to hope for it, and then I want you to quietly. That word quietly does not mean don't say nothing. It says don't complain. Wait on God. Trust God where you can't trace him. And watch God make a difference in your life because of the quietness and the hope of salvation. Look what 1 Thessalonians says in the same text, amen. It says 5, 8. He said, but let us who are of the day, watch this, everybody, be sober. Putting on the breastplate of faith and what? Love and for an helmet and hope of salvation. He says pretty what Ephesians says, put on the whole arm of God. Otherwise, if you're going to wait on God, if you want salvation, amen, it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a warfare to get where God really wants us to be. And he says right this, but let us who are of the day be sober. You that have been born again into the light, quit being drunk by other people's circumstances. Quit getting inebriated, if you will, by other situations. Put on the breastplate of faith. 
not of just, look, breastplate of faith. All right, protect yourself by your faith. Protect what God said to you. Hold on to what God said. It is the hope of your, oh, my God, for what God wants to do in our lives. He puts it in life so that we don't lose hope of it. We bless you right there, God. Watch this. He goes on further, amen. Not only does it that and put on the whole helm of salvation and the whole idea, he says, what now? Hope in his glory. So after you get salvation, now move on to the glory. Hey, here's the story, y'all. Work on the glory now. Because out of all that you hoped for thus far, now we come to a point that we get to celebrate. Now we come to a, a, a walk now that we can glorify God in. Yeah, yeah, that's what he says. Watch. And I love this one in Romans. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Watch that. Romans 5, 2, 5 says this. But whom also we have access. Somebody shout access. Access. By faith into the grace we're in. Where? Where in we stand. The grace does not come where you stand, but where he stands. If you stand where he stands, then the grace stands with you. It's only when we stand outside of God's grace, outside of God's will, that we can expect him to be there. He said, we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand. Watch this. And what? We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. I am hoping that what I do and what I say that the glory shows up. I'm hoping in what I do and what I act and what I uh, operate in that the glory, I come on Sunday morning hoping that the glory shows up. That's what we're asking God to do. Quit coming to church expecting a preacher to make you happy. Wait for God's glory to show up. Don't wait for no praise team to make you happy. Let God's glory show up. And watch, she says this in verse 3, and not only, not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Stop, park the car. <laughs> we glory in what? We glory in tribulations. Now, why would we glory in tribulation? Because it worked patience. Hi, ah, God. If you didn't have no trials and no tribulations, then you don't know what patience is. It's they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He says, therefore, it turn right in tribulation also. Watch this. Knowing that tribulation work in patience, verse 4 says, and patience comes that word called experience. You know why you have patience that you didn't have before? Because you've been through something. You already know the outcome of this whooping. Ah, oh, come on. Hallelujah. Amen. There's something you did as a child, you already knew the consequences. Matter of fact, you just, matter of fact, you're so patient, you took a long time to go home because you knew the outcome. The experience already told you what the outcome, and we have that, everybody. Ah, oh, my Lord Jesus. He's a patient experience, and experience what? Hope. So my experience is where my hope come from. Why do you have hope in everything? Because of my experience. What experience, Pastor Denson, amen, how he picked me up? What experience, Pastor Denson, because of how he moved me, how he protected my family, how he blessed my children, how he protected the love, how he gave me a job, I roof over my head. I got hope now. Now, you can hope on in the IRS, you can hope in, in Ukraine and the stock market, but my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and his righteousness. Yes, God. And hope make it not a shame. Watch this. Because of the hope that I have him, guess what? He doesn't embarrass me. Ah, I'm not ashamed to tell you that I'm waiting on God. Remember I told you my father told me don't ride with nobody else? He'll be there. Those parents left many times and looking back in that rearview mirror talking about them kids waiting. But you know what? Hope made not a shame because the love of God is shot abroad. I knew that my daddy was going to show up. Can I tell you? I know that my father is going to show up. I know my God's going to show up. Won't he show up at your house? Has he ever showed up at your house? Has he ever showed up you at the right time and the right place when you thought it was over? But look at God. Hmm. Out of nowhere he shows up. And when he shows up, they say he shows out. He said, because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So why this hope in the glory of God is not something you get off the shelf, it's given to you. Now you have to get it, understand it's given to you by what you go through and not what you get to. Mm -hmm. Above, now hope that abounds. Not only do we have the hope in the glory of God, but the hope that what? Abounds. It almost like rebound. It abounds. Amen. 5.13 says this. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, believing that ye may abound in hope 
through the power of the Holy Ghost. May, now may the hope fill you up with peace. And what? In believing. I have peace because of what I believe. I don't have peace because of what I receive. I have it because of what I believe. And because I believe, I receive. That you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Guess what? You're not going to have this hope without the power of the Spirit of God on your life. You're not going to have this joy that I'm talking about, all of these things that I'm giving you today, if you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm talking not talking about you speaking in tongues. I'm talking about you being saved. Ah, for God so loved the world that he gave the only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That's where the power comes from. It comes from you right there in the name of Jesus Christ. Hope that abounds. Watch this. Not only hope that abound, but hope that abides. I need something to hang out with me. Hope that abides. Look what 1 Corinthians says. It's so eloquent says. He said, and now abideth. Faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is what? Charity. I wish and I pray that other people will know that hope only abides where you have charity. He said, the greatest of all of this, of all that we have, all right, is faith, hope, and charity. Got faith, I got saved. Got hope, he's coming. But watch this. God said, you can't have faith and hope if you ain't going to give nothing. I'm not talking just in a monetary way. I'm talking about just in the way of helping somebody. When we get that idea of the fact that we do it in that way, and as it is stated, as we get the love of God shown by what we do. Our charity is not what we give, but what we do. And we do it because people stand in need. Somebody needs a hug. Someone needs to be encouraged. Someone needs to be loved. What are you going to do? Does it abide in your life? Does it abide in your way of thinking? I'm always, I'm a blessed man. I really am. But I'm always thinking about helping somebody. Sometimes my family think I help too much. Sometimes my church think I help too much. But there abides the hope in my life. I'm hoping that what I do for somebody else that others may see it and come to know Jesus Christ. There abides. Well, if it abides, then there must be a calling for it. Look at this, the hope of his calling. We get where we are. We are where we are because of the hope of his calling and not ours. Ephesians says it this way, the eyes of the Lord, of your understanding being enlightened. Number one, the eyes of your understanding. Look how he says it poetically, the eyes of of your understanding. Otherwise, you get to a certain point that you can start seeing stuff. The eyes of your understanding be what? It becomes enlightened. Look here. It, watch this. Have you ever heard this scripture? You trying to say which one? I know. I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to tell you right now. Watch this. It's that scripture that you've been hearing your whole life. And all of a sudden, you came to church one Sunday, and someone read it, and all of a sudden, Wow. The light came on. You've been hearing it your whole life. You know why you, uh, you were enlightened and you understand right now? Because of your hope. Something was built up in you, all right, to evident with the word of God of everything I've already said, and now it's stirred up you by the Holy Ghost, and now God let you hear. Why? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And now, like, I now know what I'm supposed to do. Now I know what I'm supposed to say. Now I know where I'm supposed to go. Why? I've been enlightened. When I was running from the Lord, amen, at age 10, God called me to preach, and I ran for nine years and answered to 19, amen. But when I hit 19, I went to a church in Texas, in the Copper's Cove, Texas, little house, couldn't hold more than 60 people, amen. And the man began to preach the word of God, and he did not hoop, he did not squall, he did not clear his throat, he just taught it. And for the first time, the eyes of our understanding had been enlightened. I'd heard the word that he preached. It was a simple text, but I got it. You're not going to get it if it's not the hope of his calling. You can't make yourself get this. God only gives it to the one that, he get, that we get, that, that will give him permission. And then God needs to know that you're on his pathway to get this. Watch this. He's enlightening that they may know the hope of the calling and what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance of the saints. Not only did I get enlightened by the word, I started looking at my inheritance that God wanted to give me. 
Quit trying to get your inheritance when you go to heaven. Your inheritance right now. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant right now. You are the head and not the tail right now. You're on top and not beneath right now. Quit trying to wait till you get to the by, by and by. And then when you get old, you miss your whole life because you didn't get enlightened. And then now you want to live life. And now you're too old to do anything. You better go and live. In the name of Jesus, yes, sir. Not only that, the hope that is blessed. I have the hope of his calling, but then I have a hope that's blessed. Here it is. Titus says, looking for that blessed hope that the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ. A hope that's blessed is I know what I'm waiting for. A child is waiting for his father and waiting for his mother, a man. Hope is because he's blessed. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God. And I say, otherwise, I ain't just waiting around for just one guy. I'm looking for king of king and lord of lords. The whole triune God is going to be there. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's why he says he sits on the right hand making an intercession for us. That's somewhat, it's a baton. The Holy Ghost gives it to Jesus. Jesus gives it to God and says, God, that's covered by the blood. Yes. Yeah. Hope that is blessed. A hope that is living. Not only blessed, but a hope that's what? That is living. The word it says in 1 Peter 1.3. Blessed be the God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the, what, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It really says right here that I've been purchased. I have a living hope. I have been purchased by the Lord Jesus Christ through his resurrection. Blessed is be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant, watch this, his abundant what? His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto what? A lively hope. Otherwise, our hope is not dead. It's a lively hope. All right? Your marriage is going to turn around because of a lively hope. Your children will turn around because of a lively hope. This world is going to turn around because of a lively hope. Uh, those in Ukraine ought to have a lively hope, but they only have that if they know that they believe in Jesus Christ. Hope to the end. Hey, hey. Hope not only to lively living, but hope what? To the end. First Peter says it this way. Wherefore, gird up your loins of your, of your mind. Be sober and hope to the what? To the end of the grace that is what? To be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. My, my. Watch this. Wherefore, gird up your loins. Of your what? Of your mind. Oh, right. get, 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 get this right. Don't be sober. Don't be drunk about it. Amen. Don't be intoxicated by it. All right. And hope to the end for the grace that is what? To be brought unto you at the revelation. Otherwise, this grace and this life, I love reading the word of God because you know what? Sometimes I'm in my room and I may have been there four or five hours and I know everything. But then at the last minute when I'm getting ready to quit, bam. Revelation comes on. There's insight comes on. All because of the fact that I know that what? My hope is within. So we find ourselves in a place where we get that. We hope to the end, if you will. Now hope that's what? That is not you know, the end, but now it's within. Somebody shout within. Within. First Peter says, but sanctify the Lord your God in your hearts. And be ready what? Always. He says what? Be ready when? Always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. He said the hope that's within right now, he said, I want you to make sure the fact that you make sure that, look, you give an answer for the hope that's within you. Why do you believe what you believe? Why do you go to church? Why do you tithe? Why do you share? Why do you love? You ought to give an answer for this. And it cannot be your answer. It got to be that which is built in the hope that God we have in Jesus Christ. But sanctify the Lord in your word. Where I got to sing it, right, I got to sing it fine right here. Many people are going to miss heaven by 18 inches from here to here. And the problem is, amen, you have not sanctified your heart. You just got it in your mind. Sometimes we decide to get saved, but our soul doesn't agree with us. How you know your soul doesn't agree with you, Pastor Denson? 
Amen. Because, in fact, you don't do everything that the soul requires. So we got to move ourselves to a place that now we trust in God where we can. He said, and be ready to always. How many ways? Always to give an answer to every man that asked you. Why? A reason of the hope that's where? In you with meekness and fear. So he says right there in 1 Peter 3.15, amen, there's some requirements for this thing. Is anybody there understand it's within? That's why we say great is he that is within us, that's in us, than he that is in the world. Because within us, amen, but like it, remember, I always tell you that don't forget there's an enemy in a me. There's an enemy in a me, and there's an enemy in a you. So you got to make sure you sanctify yourself. Because if you don't say it's out of your heart, then guess what? The enemy gets in your heart, and now you become evil. Mm. The hope that's within. And lastly, and finally, here it is. The greatest hope that I can give you out of this whole lesson is the hope of Christ-likeness. It's the hope of Christ-likeness. It's all summed up in this last point. The hope of Christ-likeness. Look what John says, and he says it so plainly in 1 John 3, 1 and 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Look here. You don't know me because you don't know my family. Ah, uh, You don't know who I'm associated with. Amen. You don't know who my father and my mama, my, you don't know my pedigree. Behold, what man of love the father has bestowed upon us, has given unto us that we should be what? Called the sons of God. That we have a right to, who, 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 who adopted you? Therefore, the world knoweth not us because what? They didn't know him. Two says this, behold, now are we the sons of God. And do it not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall what? When he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. I heard a lot about him. I heard what you say about him. I heard what you said about him. But I'm going to see him for myself. <laughs> I'm going to get to know him and see him all for myself. Oh, God. And I'll see him as he is. I've heard a lot of people say this and say that, but I don't need to see how you see him. I want to see how I see him. I want to see him for myself. Not for my mama, not for my ass. See him for myself. I know we go and say, when you get to heaven, save a seat for me. I don't need to see no Don't save me no seat. Just make sure I get to see him. And lastly, of the third verse of our closing Bible study tonight, and every man that hath this hope in him, purifieth himself even as he's pure. Let me try it this way. Every man that has this Clorox <laughs> has the same Purex, which where the word Purex come from, the word pure, to me be white. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. Otherwise, God says, if you have this hope and you have this kind of faith in God, then guess what? You purified yourself. Otherwise, you took something to get the stain out. You took something to get the shout out. Uh, he says, watch this. Even as he is pure. The word pure comes from that part of wool, pure white wool. It's called Miletus. Amen. A strand of wool that's been woven, has been woven, amen, until it's pure white. And that word pure white means to cover. And so therefore, in the midst of it, <laughs> uh, before we start getting color sheets, they're all white. You know why they were white? Because then you can tell when they got dirty. Ah. Y'all got these, new dark, these dark sheets on. Y'all keep them on for like a month at a time. But white sheets is so you know where the stain's at. God's not asked you to be perfect, but you ought to have something, a hope built in you that shows you where the stain's at. Ha! <sighs> That's all lesson tonight is about hope. Hope that you need, 
hope that I need, hope that all of us need. And it's amazing. I said all the time, you got in a car with hope. You didn't check the brakes. You didn't check the gas. You didn't check anything. You just went in just as you were, hoping that it would start. Watch this. How many things have you done hoping it would work out? When you hope in people, they fail you. You hope in Christ, he shows up. And he'll never, ever forsake you or leave you alone. Well, bless you. That's our little Sun Tzu class tonight. Amen. Uh, abbreviated lesson that we share with you. We pray that you're blessed by the word of God. I hope your hope is built up. We thank you for joining us. Amen. Tonight, we pray right now that you've been blessed by the word of God. Amen. If you're online now, amen, you want to sow a seed, you want to give your tithes, you want to give your offering, amen, those things will be up on the Jumbotron. You can do it by Zelle. You can do it by coming by. You can do it, amen, through the Bush app, amen. If you're not downloaded the Bush app, we wish that you would, amen. We out of here tonight. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance that will shine upon your life. May the Lord bless you when you rise up early and when you settle late at night. May God bless you in your labor and your leisure, your fears and even yet your tears until that day that we all sat at the feet of Jesus and there'll be no sunrise, no sunset. May the Lord God bless you and bless you real good is my prayer. Have a good evening. See you.